I got a movie camera, but now I need some sort of developing tank to be able to develop these hundred feet of film. To develop black and white film, you need a developing tank. One of my workmates very generously gave me his Jobo tank for 35mm, but 35mm film in a normal camera is only about 2 meters long, maybe a little less. Whereas these are 100 foot or 30 meter rolls. Now the usual way of getting this job done is to go out and find an old Russian Lomo 100 foot developing tank. But unfortunately, those things are really expensive. They're like a thousand bucks. It's some sort of Bakelite plastic from the 1980s. Yeah, nah. But luckily, some clever gentleman in the internet made a 3D model of the Lomography tanks reel. And one of my awesome Patreons here in Vienna is a master of 3D printing. According to his wife, he's got like 11 3D printers in his basement. <laughs> I wonder if that's all of them. Jörg generously offered to print this for me and came out just awesome. He made a beautiful job of it. It's printed in PET-G, which should be resistant to chemicals. The only thing I find a bit a little weird about the design is it feels like it's missing a spacer or something to center and mount that top spindle, but that's easy enough for me to make something. Although my mate printed all of the parts for me from that Ginal website, including the one which I've broken, this is part of the light sealing system. I didn't realize it at the time, and therefore it needs to be black. I've reprinted it, but this is just PLA, so who knows how long it'll actually hold up. If you look down inside here, see there's a hole? I guess it's a drain hole. This is part of the original Lomography tank system, I guess. I'm gonna clog that hole. I don't wanna risk a light leak. This film's too expensive. So I'll just stuff a piece of PLA up there. Use a soldering iron to melt it into place. This doesn't have to be too pretty. So now I'll just snip off the other side, but proud. Right, when you put it together, this is always loose. But there's nothing in the design to sort of fit that. So I just made a simple bushing with the inner diameter fitting the screwed part and the outer diameter fitting this top bit here. I tried loading a film. Now this piece of film is all broken and damaged because I've been playing with it so much. So it's not ideal for, for practicing. But if I pull it in reasonably tight, the perforations really need to be on the bottom, but the bottom's too damaged now for it to work. So like this. Apart from the bits where the film's damaged and jumps a track, it seems to mostly work pretty well. Obviously a new film coming out of the camera won't have that damage to it. I mean it kind of looks pretty crappy with all the, the damage to that film, but I'll do a bit more practice with this and then try it for real. The spindle with the light trap just screws in the end. Cool. So now I can film, right? Ah, uh, not so fast. I need to make some form, sort of developing tank which takes this stuff, is light tight, chemical resistant, and I can pour chemicals in and out. Now according to the internet, this reel is just under 300 millimeters in diameter. My idea was to use some 300 millimeter sewage pipe, because I'm pretty sure you can get that at most of the building supply stores. But then Jörg said, hey wait a minute, I've got a length of 300 millimeter pipe left over from building my house. So he gave it to me. His wife said all they use it for is to heist Easter eggs once a year. Now when we measured it, the main part of the pipe is slightly under 300 millimeters. And the reel doesn't quite fit. I mean, it would, but it would jam, I think. However, the pipe does have three diameters. Slightly too small, just right, and too big. So that got me thinking, I reckon I might be able to make this work.
All right, just chop it down to more manageable length. So here's the idea. This middle section is the right diameter, so it's going to be the tank. The lid of the tank needs a light track, so I'm going to need a, something that goes over the outside and the inside to make sure light can't come in. And that's where this comes in. This thick flange here and part of the, th the thin inner diameter are going to become the lid's light trap. Now the challenge is, can I cut this nice and straight and square and flat? Let's try that. I reckon my best shot at getting a nice straight cut is to use my table saw. To try and restrain this as best as possible, I've clamped two big blocks here. Unfortunately, it's not perfectly round, so that's like the tightest spot. And there's the loosest. Just have to stay well back. If this thing kicks back, it'll probably fly. But hopefully it'll be restrained enough by the clamps. Well, that went pretty well for a first attempt. Bit of scarring where I exited the cut, but otherwise it feels pretty decent. See this little ring which I've cut off? That's gonna be the inside part of the light seal of the lid. So if I have a similar piece on the outside and a gap in between, that should work. I'm gonna need a bit of a think about how I fixture this to get nice straight cuts on these two and these two because they're very important when we think about that. Well, I measured and found the right size packing pieces to hold that up the right height. Let's chop off the first bit. So there we go. Inner and outer lid uh, light seal. Next step, chop off this lip. All right, last cut here, most important part. Let's cut out the tank wall. Well, that worked pretty well. Just the last bit of the last cut didn't line up very nicely, so I've got a bit of a defect to address there. Well, that's gonna be a pretty nice looking tank, but wait a minute, I guess I need a lid and a base. Honey, when are you uh, next going out? Why? I need to clean the oven. You're right. You know, I've never understood why my wife's always so nervous about me using the kitchen. I mean, it's not like I'm going to do anything weird with it. I mean, all I'm going to do is desiccate the wash soda. Because this is like crystalline, it's got a bit of water in it. So I want a dry powder. And while that's going, I can start softening some PVC. The first bit of PVC's been in for about, uh, I guess it's been in for about uh, 10 minutes. It's nice and rubbery. Cool, that worked nicely. Now this piece is going to be the base. I'm just going to use the router with a circle point on it and just route out like a one millimeter rabbit just to give a nice lip for this to seal against. The glue I'm using is see-through so just in case I got a light leak or something this rabbit should close it off. Radius is a wee bit too much just need to nudge that in a, a millimeter or so. Good fit. I'll just roughly cut off the worst of the excess before. 
before I glue you. They have this uh, cleaning solvent which matches the glue. Being that these are machine surfaces, I probably don't need really need this solvent. There's probably some Teflon used in the production of the PVC pipe. It's really to remove that. But hey, certainly won't hurt. Now the glue itself, according to the instructions, is really for joining two pipes. And it says basically brush it on and put the pipes together within three minutes. My, in my case, I'll probably just put a big bead of it on both surfaces and squish it together. Try and do that quickly. Wipe around the inside while it's still liquid and weight it down. That bond's now hardened for 24 hours. I'll use my router with one of those guided bits to clean up that edge. Okay, I think that edge looks quite okay. Now because the lid outer light trap is too big, I'll just cut a couple of millimeters out and shorten it up. This plastic and plastic welding is actually kind of fun to play with. It goes pretty quickly. I mean, you have to leave it overnight to dry. It's certainly easy to bond and the Bonds seem just as strong as the base material. I tried turning a test piece on the lathe. The bonded bit turns just the same as the rest of it. Okay, so how we're we looking here. The main tank, the bottom part, it's pretty much finished. I do still need to put a drain in it. That's now fitting really nicely. So let's move on to the lid. The first task is to route two grooves, just to align those two. Put a guidance hole in the middle because I'm also gonna need to route a feature on the other side. Okay, next step, I need a rebate on this side, and then the next step I need to core out the centre so that the chemicals can flow in. Oh, 
Whoops, I guess I didn't have that collet tight enough. To clean up this edge, once again, piloted router a bit. Mail time. One of the mates I've met through this channel, Nikita, came around. He had managed to save a couple of little VFDs from the rubbish at work. Right, I can now start installing my tank latches. There's three more parts needed to finish off the, the whole tank. I need like this funnel and light trap part, which is going to get bonded to the top. I've already glued up a blank and just rough turned one edge just so I've got something to grip in the chuck. I also need to make some sort of a drain from the bottom, put a tube on it, and I'll need some sort of a bracket on the side so I can hold the tube up so the fluid doesn't fall out of it. But for now, come and join me at the CNC lathe. All right, that didn't quite clean up there, but no, that looks fine. All right, next up, put a hole through the middle. Oh, 
Oops, I think I might have welded that in. Oh, no, it's coming up. Next drill is a much bigger one. Just cut that a bit slower. Okay, I didn't have that drill in the taper tight enough. It's kind of a pain with such a small machine. With the high positive of rake angle on a drill, it's uh, obviously grabbing and just pulling itself into the work. Normally I just put more pressure on the drill, but um, this stuff's so easy to cut, more pressure doesn't really help. Well, that funnel is looking pretty good. Nice contours. Amazing how much swarf's released from such a small part. Well, that funnel came out really nicely. Put a bit of glue on there. Uh-oh. For a darkroom component, that's not a good sign. I'm going to have to paint all this anyway, but I'll just have to be careful to put enough thick paint on the inside of that to make sure the light doesn't leak. To turn the drain, I'm just going to use the conventional lathe. I guess that cut was a bit aggressive. Well, at least I've now got a somewhat round bit to chuck off. And I'll be a little more careful this time. I shouldn't be quite so careless. Next time I might take this in the head. Okay, for the mounting flange I need 25, six to go. I should have two millimeters to go. 
Yep, pretty near spot on. Okay, that looks pretty good. Final diameter is 16.5, so we've got about a millimeter to go. I'll just set the top slide over a bit and make a couple of barbs on there. Maybe if I use a cut-off tool, I can cut one more. So how's this going to look? Pretty rough, but maybe I can clean it up a little with a file. Now I want the hole as close to the edge as possible. So if I just touch off on the top with my 10 millimeter drill, that's going to be my pilot spacing. So this will get a pilot hole from the top. Now I can do the counter bore on the bottom. Quite level. That looks better. I'll glue this first because then I can use it as a drill drill bushing. It's now dried overnight, so I can clean out that hole. So there's the drain. The tubing I'm going to use is this electrical conduit. It came off my lathe, but it seems nice and robust, so I'll just use that. Now I hope this is tight enough and actually makes this proper seal, but I guess we'll see. Probably better clamps to use than this. Have to see if the hardware store has some. I'm going to need some sort of a clip on the side here just to hold this tube up when I'm not actually draining stuff. Some sort of a clip glued to the side, I guess. You know, some people might look at a project like this and think they'd like a tank like this, but they don't have these tools. Honestly, this uh, PVC pipe is so easy to work with. You know, it files nicely, it cuts easily. You could quite easily do this whole build using pretty much nothing more than like a hand drill, file, some sort of a saw, whether it's a hand saw or an electric jigsaw or something like that. You're only trying to make sure it's watertight and that it's light tight. Light and water don't care if it looks a bit ugly, huh? So, you know, you can easily make up a lot of these features like the, the funnel just by stacking up a set of pretty simple shapes and then gluing them together. Because that PVC glue works really well. It seems to bond the stuff pretty much as strong as the actual base material. So yeah, if you'd like to make a tank like this, go for it.
Right, well that's drying overnight. I can start painting this. I bought this from the local hardware store. Some sort of a specific plastic spray paint. I read the instructions but it says nothing about its resistance to photographic chemicals. Let's just see if it works. Alrighty, it's now finished. Now I need to take a couple of beauty photos for the thumbnail. And also I need to use up a bit of film that I can then put in the tank, develop, and see if there are light leaks. This has just got a standard Fomapan 400 film in it. I'll just rewind it and leave the leader out. Then I'll go in the dark room, pull out maybe this much film, cut it off in the dark, put it into my tank. Okay. Which I of course have to do in the dark and then I can start developing it. Okay, tank's loaded with the test strip. So the rest of that film can go back in the Leica and get used normally. Bit fiddly the loading of these old Leicas. I bought this back in 1994. Eight or so, I guess. When I got it, it was already really beat up. It was the cheapest Leica I could find. I just wanted to see what rangefinders were like. So I think I paid two thousand shillings, which is like four hundred bucks or something, for the for the Leica, and got a decent lens for it. It's a ver it's a version three Sumicron fifty. When the camera's beat up, it's been dropped here, it's been dropped here, it's been dropped here, but I like it. Okay, now before I can use this for the first time, I need to shoot a roll of movie film. And action in three, two, one, go. Now before I can use this for the first time, I need to fill it with liquid and see just how much liquid it's going to take. Oops, I forgot to do the clap at the end, that's quite important. I need that for syncing up the audio while editing. And starting again in 3, 2, 1. Okay, this is now the second litre. Okay, two litres is going to be plenty. And stop. And shooting with film already is, seems a lot different and a lot more difficult than shooting with digital because in digital you just don't care how long you shoot for, you start, you do things, you turn it off, you cut out the bits you don't like. It's not so easy with film. Ah, I need to see how long it takes to drain. Nope. You need to know this because the development's going to keep going during this draining time. Okay, 31, 32 seconds. Let's call it 30 seconds to additional time for draining. Good to know. Next up, let's have a look in the home chemistry set. A while ago, I made up a batch of parodinol. Rodinol's a really old developer. Parodinol is basically an easy homemade version of it. So it contains 30 tablets of Tylenol, some drain cleaner, and sodium sulfite to bind the oxygen. So I think I'll make up a litre and a half should be enough, so I need three of these. And the rest water. Okay, this is my 20 degree water. This stuff oxidizes pretty fast, so you have to mix it just before use. It's going to be an 11 minute developing time. And I'll do some do some agitation every minute. Ok, 
Okay, so this is my fixer, and this is the end of the piece of film. To find out how long you fix for, we dump it in. I'll start at half past. And what we do is we watch until that film's gone clear and see-through. Whatever time that took, we double. Yeah, it's clear already. That was 30 seconds. So a minute is probably an adequate clearing time. I normally use two minutes as a minimum though, just to be sure. Since we identified that it takes 30 seconds to drain the tank, I'll start this draining about now. One of the advantages of uh, rhodanol is that, in this, or in this case parodanol, is effectively all we got here is drain cleaner and Tylenol. So the drains are going to get cleaned and it's not going to have a headache, but there's really no issues with uh, putting that sort of stuff down the drain. Now I'll just put a bit of water through, just give it a quick rinse between developer and fixer. Okay, I'll do some agitation every half minute. The fixer doesn't get thrown out, it gets kept. Fixer lasts for ages. You use it basically till it gets uh, completely saturated with silver. And I'd kind of like to try electroplating with silver with some exhausted fixer. Okay, how does this look? Okay, it looks like I underexposed the photos. That doesn't matter, that's not what we were looking for. What we care about here is, is there any evidence of light leaks, like stripes across the film or anything? And I don't see any of that. Awesome. Which means the tank should be pretty much light proof. This being the first time I load 16mm film onto this reel for the whole length and having to do it in the dark, I'm trying to set it up and make it as easy as possible for myself. So let's move all this junk away. Desk I made for one of my kids when she was little, first started school. Start with the camera, take out the film. Load film on spool. Put spool in tank, lid on tank. That's it. Wish me luck. You know, I can't find any evidence in the internet that anybody has ever made this Ganal film reel. It seems like maybe even the guy who designed it never made it. I got the impression that he maybe he lost interest. I tried reaching out to him, but didn't get a response. But you know what? It seems to work perfectly. In the dark room, I managed to spiral that on without any real issues. So I'm super happy about that. Now, developer, first development, 12 minutes. I really need to come up with a better bottle solution. 12 minutes, I'll give an agitation once a minute. Okay, developer time's up. Next comes the bleach. Now for the bleach, you have to add the potassium permanganate to the sulfuric acid solution immediately before using it. So this is going to go in a bit too concentrated. There's a bit of, bit of extra water that I needed, so I'll put the water in first, since that doesn't matter. Bleach bath runs for eight minutes. The data sheet from from Fumalpan says that the bleaching bath is still a hexavalent chrome solution. I'm pretty sure that's uh, banned in the EU, which is probably why they've switched over to this potassium permanganate based bleaching solution. When I was a kid, potassium permanganate was known in New Zealand as Condi's Crystals. And I remember my dad used to 
have us gargle the stuff if we had like a sore throat. I guess that's one of those old remedies that he believed in from his childhood. I guess with the change to potassium permanganate that's probably why they now have the, the data sheet saying that in a final user, like a private final user, is permitted to just water it down and put it down the drain because the amount of it's probably so small it's not relevant but I'll collect it and send it for recycling. That's the end of the bleaching. So the clearing solution is sodium pyro oops, pyrosulfite. Goes in for three minutes. Oh, looks like I've just broken that off. Well, that was kind of to be expected, being a weak 3D printed part. Luckily, it doesn't matter because this is now not light sensitive anymore. After this process, I need to re-expose it to light anyway. The clearing bath comes out. Right, next we have the moment of truth. We take the lid off and we should have a very white milky looking film with some with negatives visible on it, which is pretty much exactly what I'm seeing here. Cool. Ooh. Oh, you can see you can see I didn't get it properly mounted here. In fact, there's quite a few spots where the film is touching each other, so Oh yeah, that's not good. There's my bit that fell off. Anyway, re-exposure to light. They say a 60 watt bulb, but I'll just use this one. Definitely got something on there. But yeah, it's not a good sign that we've got film looks like it's kind of sticking together in most places. It's all rather exciting. I guess this is where you really want the the back piece to be printed with uh, see-through plastic as well. Doesn't really matter that much because that's only the uh, perforations. There's no images down on that bottom bit anyway. So if they don't get perfectly redeveloped, not a problem. Right. The rest of the process is not light sensitive. Development, second development goes for five minutes. Now that's quite interesting. In the actual liquid, it looks like the film's not sticking together. It looks like it's spaced quite nicely. Maybe it was only when I pulled it out that it all came and stuck together. We'll see once it's dry. Right, second developing finished. The final bath is fixer which seems like a bit of a formality here, seeing as we've already stripped out and developed all of the silver, so there really shouldn't be much left to be fixed. But oh well, they want it in there, we'll do it. Guess we'll see what it looks like once it's washed. It's gone dark again, that's supposed to happen I guess. So the final wash has just got a wee bit of dishwashing liquid in it, just to break the surface tension. Kind of like a roulette wheel. Now I saw in one of the videos, I can't remember which one, that the easiest way to handling this while you're hanging it on the washing line is to first roll it up wet on its reel. Taking a quick first look at it, there's definitely some images on there. Cool. Cool. Well overall, they seem like pretty dense negatives, but I guess we'll see once I try and scan them what they actually look like. So to summarise, I'm really happy with the tank I made from sewerage pipe. It looks like it works really well. I just need to remake that centre spindle. I'll get some PVC bar and turn one on the lathe. So if you're interested in seeing the results, please check out my last video where I reviewed this uh, Bolu R16 camera, which I got to start off this whole process. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.